Did you know that two out of every three guys are going to experience some form of male pattern borders by the time they're 35? Well, you do now, and you know, for me, it was more like 25, which was brilliant. I wish keeps had been around when I was younger because advancement science meant that there are now treatments that can combat the symptoms of hair loss and help you hold on to that hair that you have. Look, it's too late for me. My hair isn't coming back, but you don't have to be like me. Stop your hair loss early thanks to Keeps. Keeps offers generic versions of the only two FDA-approved drugs currently approved for treating hair loss. So you may have tried them before, but never at a price this low. If you were thinking, oh god, this is going to be expensive, it's medicine, well, oh, no it's not. Keeps starts at just $10 a month. How does it work? Well, for one thing, no need to visit the doctor. Just schedule a quick online consult. A little bit later, package arrives at your door. Discreet package, by the way, so no one knows what's going on. And then you use it in the privacy of your own home. So look, if you're noticing that you're losing your hair is not going to solve itself. Do something about it. Go to keeps.com forward slash top tens or click the link below to receive 50% off your first order. And now, today's video. Oh, we found evidence of surgery performed on people as far back as 12,000 years ago. These procedures indicate our ancient ancestors performed surgical trepanation, which involved drilling a hole through the skull to expose the brain. So it was clearly something that would have taken a deft hand if the patient was to live. Today, about 310 million surgeries are performed every year. We've come a long way, but despite our progress, some surgeries seem to skirt the rules and procedures of what we'd consider safe, especially when they're procedures that people perform on themselves. Number 10. Werner Forsman. If you haven't heard of Werner Forsman, it's only because he was born in 1904 and he's before your time. His contributions to medical science were so significant he won the Nobel Prize for Physiology and Medicine in 1956. This all stems from his research into heart catheterization, a procedure that is used to treat and diagnose numerous heart conditions to this day. Forsman believed if you inserted a catheter into an arm vein, you could feed it into a patient's heart. That's reasonable today, but when he came up with it in 1929, the medical establishment thought he was either an idiot or insane. So to prove his point, he had to do it to himself. To be clear, he had been expressly forbidden from doing this, so he sneaked behind the backs of his bosses and got only one other person on board, operating room nurse Gerda Ditson. Without her help, he couldn't even access the tools to perform the procedure. Forsman convinced Ditson that his procedure was sound. He convinced her so well that she volunteered to be his patient. So he strapped her to the operating room table with restraints and then pulled the old switcheroo, doing it to himself when she was restrained and unable to stop him. He managed to fight off another doctor from pulling the catheter out of his arm and then x-rayed himself to prove it worked. He then performed the procedure on a terminally ill patient, published the results, and was promptly fired from the hospital where he worked for breaking the rules. Number 9. Leonid Rogozov performed his own Antarctic appendectomy. Most of us will never go to Antarctica, and for good reason. In 2021, the average temperature between April and September was minus 61 Celsius. That's about minus 78 Fahrenheit. That's basically death in temperature form. Antifreeze, oh, will even freeze before it gets that cold. So, when people do go to the South Pole, it's usually at a research base for an extended period of time with only a small number of colleagues and no chance of contact with the outside world in any sort of timely manner. Back in 1961, Leonid Rogozov was the only doctor at the Antarctic Novolazarevskaya hell of a word, station. In April, Rogozov was feeling extremely ill, and the ship to take them back to Russia wasn't arriving for a year. As it was, the journey had taken 36 days, and he needed immediate help. He needed to have his appendix removed, and he was the only man qualified to do it. Rogozov had two choices. He could die, or he could perform the surgery himself. He had some of his colleagues work as nurses, and one was tasked with holding a mirror so he could see what he was doing. He had a local anaesthetic to numb the skin of his stomach, but once he got inside, he'd have to wing it with no painkillers at all. The mirror proved too hard to maneuver, so he did the surgery blind, letting a sense of touch guide him. He nearly passed out several times, but after two hours of working in his own gut, he had the organ, which was a day away from bursting, removed. Two weeks later, he was back at work. Number 8. Inez Ramirez performed her own C-section. If you're interested in just how tough a mother can be, look no further than Inez Ramirez. At age 40, Ramirez already had six children and had lost a seventh at birth a few years earlier. She lived some 80 kilometers away from the nearest town in a very rural part of Mexico on a farm. Her home had no phone and her husband was away at a cantina. It was only Ramirez and her children at home. Feeling a familiar pain in her abdomen over the course of 12 hours, Ramirez knew that something was wrong with the baby and if she didn't get help, she risked losing her child as she had lost her previous one. But there was no 
no way to contact help, so she took matters into her own hands. Ramirez took a few hits from a bottle of alcohol and grabbed a knife from the kitchen. She had experience butchering animals, but no medical knowledge. Despite that, she managed to make precise incisions that prevented her from wounding the baby or any internal organs. She removed the baby, cut the umbilical cord with scissors, and passed out. Ramirez's six-year-old son ran to town and came back with help. The health worker who came back sewed Ramirez up with a regular needle and thread. Doctors who examined her after the facts were convinced that the story happened as Ramirez relayed it, and they were impressed by the work she did. Number seven, Boston Corbett killed John Wilkes Booth and also castrated himself. In 1865, after John Wilkes Booth assassinated Abraham Lincoln, he fled on horseback. The military was enlisted to track the killer, and the 16th New York Cavalry Regiment was the regiment that tracked him down. They located him in a barn where Boston Corbett fired a shot from his revolver, hitting Wilkes in the neck. Although this was Corbett's main claim to fame, the man led an interesting and curious life. He also vanished and was never seen again after 1894, but during his life, his eccentricities manifest most noticeably in the surgery he performed on himself. In 1858, he castrated himself in an effort to curb his desire for prostitutes. Rather than seeking medical attention, he went to dinner after the act. In later years, historians have come to believe that Corbett, who had spent time working as a hatter, had absorbed many of the toxic chemicals that had affected his mental state. Number 6. Doctor Repairs His Own Torn Ligaments In Cincinnati, Dr. Mohab Ferd spent years performing surgery on people's hands. He works on upwards of a dozen hands per day and has done so for over a decade. If you want an expert on hand surgery, he's your man. And for that reason, it seems almost too obvious that when he needed surgery on his own hands, he was the one to perform it. After injuring himself playing paintball, Ford realized that he'd torn some ligaments. Though he did get an assist from a colleague at the behest of his wife, he handled a good portion of the operation on his own and got some insight into exactly what his patients go through. Number 5. Ozzy removed his own cyst after waiting two years Tom Petty once sang that the waiting is the hardest part, but the electrician from Australia who removed his own cyst after waiting two years might have a different opinion. He used a common utility knife to excise the grape-sized cyst from his own hand. Wait times are supposed to be limited to a single year, and the cyst was affecting the man's work. After two years, he couldn't handle the weight anymore, so he heated the knife up, cut the cyst out, drained the goo from inside, disinfected the wound, and popped a band-aid on it. Doctors pointed out how lucky he was that he didn't make anything worse, while admitting that yes, wait times can be egregious. Number 4. Woman tried her own breast augmentation it's hard to say there's ever a good time to perform surgery on yourself. Sometimes it's obviously done out of necessity, and sometimes it was done simply because a surgeon had the skill to do it. But when an everyday person tries to perform a surgery, it can be a sign that there's a much larger issue related to mental health or just a terrible lack of understanding related to potential consequences. In 2014, a woman from Argentina attempted to perform a breast augmentation on herself. She did this by injecting Vaseline into her own chest. The procedure had complications soon after, and she began having breathing problems. She denied having any idea what happened at first, not telling doctors what she'd done. Later, she admitted it, but by then, it was too late, and she suffered a fatal blood clot. Number 3. Butter Knife Hernia Surgery Contrary to what a lot of people believe, wait times for surgery in the United States are often much longer than they are in countries with universal health care. People can wait two, three, four months and more depending on how necessary the surgery is. Things like hernia surgery can have you waiting for a while. In 2011, a man in California opted to take care of his own hernia surgery. Whether it was due to an issue with wait times, money, or even mental illness isn't really known. But what is known is that he tried to do it with a butter knife. When emergency crews arrived, the knife was sticking out of the man's abdomen. He took it out and shoved the cigarette he was smoking into the wound, potentially to cauterize it, or just apparently to look maybe like an 80s action star. Number 2. Tatsuya Ichihashi performed plastic surgery to evade police Nearly every self-surgery you'll hear about is done out of medical necessity. Tatsuya Ichihashi performed his surgery to escape prosecution for murder, though. He changed the way he looked by using scissors to cut down the size of his lips, a box cutter to remove moles, and used thread to sew up his nose in an attempt to make it look smaller. At some point, he went to a real plastic surgeon to get a nose job since his own efforts did little, but the surgeon later remarked his appearance barely changed anyway. Ichihashi was on the run in Japan after the 2007 murder of Lindsay Hawker. It was over two years later when he was finally captured. Number 1. Evan O'Neill Kane performed three surgeries on himself. Dr. Evan O'Neill Kane was a quirky guy in part because of circumstance and in part because of just general weirdness. For instance, he once suggested mothers and newborn babies get matching tattoos so the babies wouldn't get lost. He also tattooed his patients with his initials in India ink after performing surgeries. 
One patient he never tattooed was himself, not for lack of chances, though. He performed three surgeries on himself over the years. His first was an amputation after his finger got badly infected. He didn't believe general anesthesia was necessary for surgery. Two years after the finger, Kane needed to remove his own appendix. Again, he just used local anesthesia for the procedure. He didn't even need to do it himself. There was another surgeon in the room who closed him up after. He just wanted to do it. Years later, in his 70s, Kane also performed a hernia operation on himself. The operation was a success, but he died several months later.